The George Polk Awards, sponsored by Long Island University, are pleased to announce a new award dedicated to the memory of an extraordinary journalist, Sidney H. Shanberg. Mr. Shanberg's career spanned some five decades. He worked for the New York Times, Newsday, and as a freelancer. He was a savvy political correspondent, an intrepid foreign correspondent, a demanding editor, and a columnist who championed the underdog. I often write about people who are outside the power structure, who don't necessarily uh, get City Hall or government officials to pay attention to them. Insiders don't need me to care about them. They're all set. They've got this network of, of uh, contacts and power, and they pick up the telephone, and they say, Let's, I, I need this permit, I want to build this building. Uh, the outsiders can't do that, and that's why I write about them, because they really don't have a voice, and they ought to. Sidney Hillel Shanberg from Clinton, Massachusetts, a Harvard graduate, a two-time Polk Award winner, and a correspondent for the New York Times, believed in writing long. Long, to him, meant telling the story as he judged it needed to be told, always in high relief. Staying with the story, no matter what the public or professional cost, was a religion for Sid. He covered two wars and two holocausts in Asia during the 1970s. He's perhaps best known for his work in Cambodia in 1975, when the Khmer Rouge guerrillas were closing in on the capital, he refused an editor's directive from New York to leave. Instead, he stayed behind with his friend and translator, Dith Pran, to document the beginnings of this murderous regime. Most of the time I wrote about what was happening to civilians and how many were dying and how many were uh, being forced out of their homes or even killed by B-52 raids. Mr. Shanberg was forced to evacuate after two weeks, but Mr. Dith had to stay on for four years, undergoing misery and near starvation until he escaped to a joyful reunion. Around the corner comes Pran, and he's hobbling because his diet, you know, was so bad and he just couldn't run. And then I started the run, and then he ran into my arms. Well, I was crying, he was crying. And he said, oh, Sid, you came, you came. And, you know, and I said, after a while, can you forgive me for not getting you out? She says, There's nothing to forgive. Their story was recounted in a very powerful magazine piece, which inspired the film, The Killing Fields. One would leave to tell his story and win the Pulitzer Prize for international reporting. One would stay to face his destiny and make his escape to freedom in the killing fields. The prize is offered by Mr. Shanberg's widow, Jane Fryman Shanberg, and it confers an award of $25,000. So now, six years after his death, I am proud to sponsor the Shanberg Prize in areas significant in Sydney's work. Those are armed conflicts, local, state, or federal corruption, military injustice, war crimes, genocide or sedition, and authoritarian government abuses. Sid believed that great journalism should be recognized. Thank you to John Darnton, Jim Ottaway, and Long Island University for bringing the Shanberg Prize into the Polk Awards family. I look forward to seeing the prize awarded each year in the spirit of the deep reporting and great writing Sidney Shanberg valued. The winner of this year's Sidney H. Shanberg Prize for long form journalism is Luke Mogelson from The New Yorker, whose article Among the Insurrectionists takes us inside the Capitol, side by side with the rioters on January 6th. I'm very humbled and grateful to receive this award, even more so given that it has Sidney Schemberg's name attached to it. He was um, really an exemplar of the kind of journalism 
that uh, I aspire to do. And if this article about the anti-democratic uh, forces in the U.S. and their increasing uh, militarization can have a fraction of the impact that um, Sidney Schamberg's stories did, I'll be even more gratified. Thank you.